Hello hunters! So today I want to make a little bit of a uh, my version of a uh, sword and shield progression built throughout the story until you beat the final boss. So yeah, um, I don't think my set is by any means uh, the, the, the most efficient or the most meta way possible but I just want to show you guys what I use throughout uh, my whole journey through the Sunbreak storyline. Um, yeah, I I've, uh, I know it's it takes a while for this to come out, but I wanted to release all the all the my all my hunts first, you know, until I beat the final boss, and I want to release this progression build. That's why it takes a while. So let's just get started with it. So first of all, uh, at the very early master rank, I use uh, let's look at the armor first. I use uh, a higher rank Teostra. A great Izuchi male, Jaggy Gauntlet, JD Gauntlet, Baggy Coil, and Alloy Greaves. Uh, and then I use uh, Attack Boost level 2 Talisman with one level 2 slot. Uh, again, with the Talismans, I think it can be whatever, as long as it, as long as it got either a level 1, uh, at least it got level 2, 2 level 2 slots. Yes, that's what I mean. Man, sometimes it's hard to say. And then for the weapons, I know I've read this already, but uh, I was using yeah I was using the Ratian uh, sword and shield yeah. So yeah, with this build, actually you can get quite a lot of the good skills. You know, you get a lot of the offensive boost setting. So yeah, uh, first of all, you get well uh, in my build at least I got level seven attack boost. But if you don't have the talisman that I use. Then you have a level 5 attack boost, which is still, you know, decent. That's a, what is it, plus 6% and plus 8 bonus. So I think that's still decent. Uh, and then you will have a critical I7. Uh, so that gives you 40% affinity. And if you're using the Ratian Sword and Shield, it gives a natural 10% affinity. So that will match you at... Uh, 50 percent and with weakness exploit level 3 your attack on weak spot will be 100 percent affinity so yeah and lastly of course i got speed sharpening um yeah and then the rest is just kind of there there's only one level of crit boost but then it's fine uh and yeah you also you can also slot in a flinch tree here so that you know if you want to play multiplayer it works so yeah this the build for the very early master rank um Honestly, I think you can just you don't you don't really have to farm this. You can still go and use the Valstrax armor until the mid game one that I'm going to show next. But yeah, this is uh, I just want to make this set because I was helping a friend that he hasn't he just bought rice, so he really wants to go to Sunbreak directly, so he doesn't have the Valstrax armor yet, you know. And I think this build works pretty well. Yeah. This, this build works pretty well for that. The only problem with this build is that if you look at the decorations, it is a bit lacking. <laughs> There's a lot of level 1 slots here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, there are 4 level 1 slots and then there are only like very limited uh, level 2 to 4 slots. Yeah. And that's what, yeah. Even the Ratian weapon doesn't have any slots there. But yeah. That's pretty much what I used. Uh, good thing about this set again, uh, if you don't have the Valstrax armor, you can hunt all of these monsters in the first uh, master rank, like MR1. So if we go ahead and check here, oh no, uh, if you go ahead and check here, you can find yeah, like Great Izuchi right there, and uh, where's Baggy? There's Great Baggy right here. I think there's another quest with just Great Baggy alone. I'm not too sure on that. But yeah. Uh, I don't think there is. Never mind. But yeah. Either way, you can get this armor set really early on MR1. And then the rest of it, um, like the Jaggy Gauntlet and Aloy, is just kind of mining and killing small monsters. So it should be fine. Yes. So this the armor for the very early uh, Master Rank. And then now let's move on to the mid game one the mid mr one here you go this is the one that i use i'm still using uh let's look at the equipment again uh for the armor i'm still using a high rank tailstra helmet 
uh, I mean, it's just really good, right? Level 3 critical eye and 1 critical boost is, uh, yeah. It's just really too good to not use. It's just too, so efficient if you want the critical eye 7. And then, pretty much almost similar to everything, but, uh, yeah, Narg, uh, change the Izuchi mail to Nargakuga. Uh, pretty much the same, it's just better slots, yeah. Uh, mainly I, I picked this for the critical eye level 2, yeah. And then I'm still using the Jaggy Gauntlet, it got 3 attack boosts, which I like. And then I use engine, I farm for engine at coil. Uh, problem with engine at coil is that you do need the engine at mantle <laughs> to get this. And boy, I hunted like 16 engine ads to get this. So hopefully if you're uh, getting engine at coil, hopefully you're lucky with it. Yeah. And lastly, I use the Ingot Greaves. Again, still as good as ever. 2 attack boost, 2 critical eye from the head legs. And then for the talisman, this time I use uh, a le in my talisman there's a level three warrior buck whisperer with a level two and with one level two slots and one level one slots. That's the one that I use. And for the weapon, uh, I switch the weapon. Uh, right now, I use this, at first I use this Garen Golm weapon, Garen Golm sword and shield. This one because of the look at the amazing slots it got. So yeah, I, I was using this at first, and then once I unlock Seragios, I, I quickly farm it and, you know, crafted the Seragios one. I mean, it got white sharpness, it got lower raw, but it got white sharpness, so it makes up for it. However, it, uh, it do have worse slot on the weapon, so yeah. Uh, and now, if so yeah, if you look at the skills from here, we get, again, still level 7 attack boost, level 7 critical eye. I slot in defense boost because uh, I don't know what else to slot in for the level 1 slots and might as well right, have more defense. And then I have 3 weakness exploits still. This time we got stun resistance level 3, speed sharpening level 3, and from the talisman I got level 3 warrior buck whisperer and there's a level 1 critical boost. And the rest is just kind of there. And of course there's flinch free from Nargakuga armor, which uh, you know, you can play multiplayer with this, obviously. Yeah. Uh, no, let's look at the deck, the decorations for this, and I mean it's comfier, that's for sure. <laughs> it got a few more, uh, what's that name? Slots that you can play around with. That's it. Actually, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, pretty much with that, with this setup, uh, it works very well, I think. And yeah, for the talisman, you don't have to use Warbuck Whisperer. I just really want to use Warbuck Whisperer that time because around MR4, that's when you get all the new switch skills, and I kind of want to spam most of them. <laughs> that's why I decided to use the Warbuck Whisperer. Yeah. Uh, honestly, yeah, anything with two level two slots would would work well as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's for the mid game um, sword and shield build that I use, and lastly. This is for the end game one. Not end game actually. Just like late master rank. This is uh, like what MR5 maybe around that. So now let's look at the equipment now. Uh, yeah. So look at the armor again. This time, the tails uh, helmet is finally upgraded to the master rank version one. This is the uh, yeah tails uh, the Kaiser Crown X still with the three critical eye and one critical boost. But it have three level one, have three level one slots now. Uh, you unlock this at like really late, like after you beat Malzeno, and then after you beat Shagaru Magala, that's when you can craft uh, Teosva's head. So before that, you can just still use the high rank one because that's what I did at least. Uh, yeah, and then once I you know unlock Malzeno, I beat Malzeno, I quickly farm for his um, body and coil the so yeah Malzeno male and then I use uh, I use Utsushi through braces right now but back then I you can also this also works with uh, Rattalos arm yeah Rattalos great uh, farm brace I think that's what it's called because I only choose this because it got the two attack boosts yeah that's the main point basically the two attack boosts and I use the Malzeno coil and of course Ingot Greaves and for the talisman, I use uh, uh, level two speed sharpening with t level three recovery speed, and it got two level two slots. Yeah, I only choose this really for the slots. I mean, speed sharpening is also nice, I guess. But yeah, uh, again, 
uh, this build, I don't think it's any, you know, it, it won't win any DPS race or anything, I think, but it's definitely comfy because uh, the reason I use the mouse in a body and coil is because I want to use the skill Blood Right right here. Um, Blood Right, a proportion of damage dealt is converted to is converted to health when smacking a broken monster part. So what this basically means is World Iceborne Health Augment, where you hit and you heal. But this time with excess fat steps, because you have to break the monster's part, bro break the monster first, and then you know, if you hit that broken part, then you get healed. At level three, the healing is actually pretty insane. I think uh, you can quickly go from like you know a quarter of a health. Uh, all, all the way up to what you call that to full health so yeah and of course the body and the uh, let's look at the skills again yeah from mouse and body and koi you do get level 2 part breaker so it's it's really helpful on getting those part breaks now let's look at the other skills uh here we got three level seven critical eye of course you know you want to get that uh 40 affinity from this and you get I use I got attack boost level five. Again, I still slot in defense boost because I don't know what else to slot in. No, expert defense, why not? We just exploit level three. Recovery speed level three. Stun resistance level three. Speed sharpening level three. And blood light level three. And level two critical boost. Lastly, here part breaker level two. And the rest is just kind of there. Yeah. Uh. Again, yeah. This set is just really comfy with blood right, especially. But though blood right is very situational, if you can break the monster part and reach that part consistently, then it's really good. But when I was using it against Kushala and uh, Teostra, I had a really hard time breaking their body parts. So really, the blood right effect doesn't really turn on until like the you know eight or nine minute mark kind of thing. So it's pretty useless until then. So yeah, the blood right is really situational, but I just really want to use the new skills. That's why. And as of the weapon, uh, right now I had the Tormented Shade Keeper, so this is the Magnum Malo Sword and Shield. Yep. Uh, Magnum Malo Sword and Shield is pretty it's good. It got 320 raw purple sharpness and 30 blasts. And it got, you know, 1 level 2 slots and 1 level 1 slots with a level 2 rampage slots, which is nice. But I think this is the more uh, efficient uh, weapon to use, I think. But when I was finishing the story, I wanted to use again the flagship monster's weapon, so I end up using the Duke's Base Lord, which is Mauzeno's Sword and Shield right here. Uh, Mauzeno's Sword and Shield, uh, similar to, very similar actually, to um, Magna Malo's 320 Raw, Purple Sharpness, change the Blast to Dragon, so the Mauzeno's Sword and Shield have 31 Dragon element on it, and this time it got one level four slots, and sadly it got a one level one rampage slot, which is uh, sad because that means you can't slot in things like the anti wyvern stuff. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, the anti dragon, anti aquatic, anti aerial, and fang exploit. You can't use any of that. Uh, so that's why I think technically the Mark Malo one I think is is a better choice. But if you want to use the uh, what's his name? Malzeno Sword and Shield, it also works. You just sacrifice the Rampage slots. And that's why I put in um, Spirit Brood Jewel. Pretty, pretty, eh, it's not the most useful, honestly. But yeah. Uh, that's pretty much what I use to complete this, uh, to complete Sunbreak storyline. Um, yeah, we're using Sword and Shield, beating the final boss. And yeah. And man, the final boss was such a treat to fight, so... Now, I hope this uh, guide, this progression build guide for Sweat and Shield helps. Uh, I know it's not the most you know, efficient of meta or whatever, but hey, I used it, it works, so I think it should work for other people as well. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys find this uh, progression guide for Sweat and Shield helpful, uh, please uh, subscribe, like the video, comment what you think. Um, yeah, tell me what you used to complete the the Sunbreak storyline. You know, uh, I'm curious to see. So yeah, again, I'll, I'll guess I'll see you in the next video. See ya.